yeah, thank you so much for coming. I'm Alex Jenkins, and as already introduced, I'm an illustrator from South London. Um, I've been freelancing for about three and a half years now, um, after graduating from Campbell College of University. Yeah, I got it wrong, but I noticed some Campbell students in the crowd there, so shout out if you're there. Um, I suppose I'll describe my work, it's, it's grotesque. I mean, I do get a bit fed up of slinging that term around, but it probably does best fit it. Um, I like to draw things that are a bit gruesome and also perhaps even disgusting. Um, it's probably a, a picture of my bad personal habits or also um, the less flattering side of human nature, which is always good to highlight. And I also aim to create images that tell a story. You can see, <laughs> beautiful dance. Um, I like to tinge them with the surreal and they are hopefully funny sometimes. Um, I try not to take myself too seriously, and I, I don't know how I could when I draw pictures of people squeezing spots for a living. But um, I, I tend to be influenced by the things that I see around me. It's probably observational in style and maybe a bit self-reflective too, like the spot, I've got lots of those at the moment. Um, quite a lot of what I draw is actually a comment on the things that I might be worried about in life. Um, for example, smoking too much is a, current, or a common theme. Um, also annoyances and um, things that I find a bit absurd or frustrating. Uh, this one is, uh, you know, the, the frustration of the, the obsession of celebrity that you can see here. Um, and as I said, storytelling is a big part of my work. I, I've never really been the best communicator verbally. Um, I see myself as a, pretty much a, a big, sort of bumbling guy with a bit of an awkward sense of humour. Um, so illustration is a great way that I can express a story without having to like, look anyone in the eyes. <laughs> and I do avoid adding titles to my work. Um, again, I don't take myself too seriously. So um, I find that if you add like a kind of heady title to it, it can often make it seem a bit more pretentious if it's coming from myself, you know. And I, you know, I don't think I could come across that well. Um, I did like this one though, actually. It was, I called it Good Cop, Sad Cop. And, like the play on Good Cop, Bad Cop. I like the idea of like a, a policeman who was so distraught in the interrogation room that the, the criminal had to comfort him. <laughs> Clever stuff, yeah. <laughs> and this one as well, this, is, um, uh, this one is called Show Me the Future, because the, the portal directs the future up his anus. <laughs> um, I think a lot of the, the, the influences come as, from experiences as a child. I used, to draw, I used to play with Vance for hours on end and make them fight. And I'll try and turn it into a more serious subject. This is meant to be a comment on invasion and the destruction of war with ants. So it's like harking back to my child days. This one is about bullying in the workplace. <laughs> um, I feel that car salesmen they actually get quite a bad rep, so I thought I'd stick up to them. And estate agents too. But... Oh, and here's God just bowling earth out the gates of heaven. See ya. And I, I don't want to offend anyone, anyone here who's a fan of Friends. I felt I was forced to watch it a lot as a kid. And I was never really that big on it. You know, it's a bit, yeah, a bit grating after a while. Um, but yeah, I often try and have a straightforward message. Um, this one, I, I did it, and it was, it was just about me going out too much and getting McDonald's at five in the morning. And then you can see like, the kind of excess around me. But then, you know, when I put it online, a lot, I got a lot of comments about it being about veganism and anti-fast food corporations, but it was really a lot more simple than that. It was just me, <laughs> yeah, doing too much bad things. Um, yeah, so um, I worked with comics recently. Um, they, they, they seem to have given me a new lease of life and my creativity. Um, and moving away from the single image illustrations, um, it became quite difficult, I think, to tell a real story or to tell, fit all the story into one singular image. And you get a bit like claustrophobic, in a sense, of trying to think of the idea and everything. But comics have given it at least a life and I can create a bit more freely, which is great. Um, yeah, and you think, I think you, you plan your illustration in a different way as well. Like now, it's, it's a different way of approaching the planning process. I started these comics as a form of getting me into animation. I'm going to show you really a bad animation now, because this is all I've managed to do in two years. And it's going to be loud music, so beware as well. Yeah. Enough of that. But um, no, no, the reason for that, yeah, no, it was just to show that, like, you know, the reason I got into comics was because it was the, the, the idea of wanting to get further in animation. And the, the good thing about it was I could then plan out a story through this and, like, you know, have your key moments and and fully prep, but I didn't get that far with animation as you see. Um, so I 
co comics kind of I not that accidentally stumbled across them, but that's what's resulted from this, which is which is cool, of course, well, good. Well, I'm, that's why I'm here now. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, this is one of the first ones I did actually. Um, it's it's one about me struggling to look for creativity because I did at the beginning um, and having no ideas. I thought, like, how can I do an animation? Like, what can I think of? And you know, I end up drawing a penis. Having a cigarette, and then something just rips my brain out, and all my creativity is gone again, and I'm content. We're back where I was. Um, this is another six-panel comic, and this is what I started doing. Um, this one, a guy gets on the treadmill, and his, his heart stays in bed. He falls off the treadmill, dead. <laughs> Poetic. <laughs> but it's also cool because you can also you can have two stories running alongside each other, which is great. Um, Nine-panel comics are good. I think they can help to, you, you can tell more of a story with them and maybe they're, quite, they're a bit better for maybe some more serious content because you can, and also more abstract work as well because you can kind of like make it, you can reel the story back so it makes sense to the viewer. Um, so they're good to, to use and this is meant to be like, you know, like a sort of circle of life. Is that from Lion King? Cycle of life? Anyway, yeah, and then he ends up meeting Death at the end and then Death gives him a piggyback so it's quite a comforting ending to the second song. It wasn't, yeah. By this, I've got into four-panel comics, and I think they, they work better in terms of humour. I think you have to be more punchy with the, and finding the, you know, having the joke and finding, planning where it's going to be and where it's going to result. Um, this one is actually about my experience tonight. I kind of tried to perceive how it would be. So there I am outside the venue. It's like the cigarette of death. There you guys, as you can see. There's me, like, pushing my buttons nervously. There's my exposed buttocks. And there's my tiny penis as I hide behind a microphone. <laughs> and there you are, huge. I thought about other ideas for this, actually. I thought about maybe it could be like the elephant man in like a Victorian physician, is that the right word, physician? Auditorium. Or I could be perhaps like a, a, a dissected frog under a microscope or something. But you get the idea, yeah, that kind of thing, of how I am now. Um, this is another four-panel comic, so I'm going to move into these now. Um, and this is what I'm currently doing. Um, this is probably a bit self-reflective, actually. There I am, I'm romantically with my phone in bed. I blissfully recline. I can sleep peacefully now. There's my hand. <laughs> Traumatised. I thought it'd be nice to capture the perspective of a hand because, you know, they probably, they probably go through a lot in life and it's good to know like, someone sticks up for them and shows how they would feel. Here's another one. Um, Engrossed in a book, fantastic novel. In the park, can't stop reading. Oh, policeman. Ah. <laughs> Facebook, maybe, could work. Facebook, with clever player. Uh. Um, this one's a bit bleak, actually. Um, not really that funny, but I quite liked it. I'm not bigging myself up, but it was quite sad in a way. Um, there's a guy in his cell looking out on the full moon. The glimmer of hope. Oh, he approaches. It's just a picture. <laughs> Here's another. You might, yeah. It's about spots again. I have a thing about spots. Um, there, she notices it in the mirror. Gives it a good aggressive squeeze. Doesn't go anywhere, it just gets bigger. So she embraces it and <laughs> walks off into the sunset arm in arm. Um, what's nice about comics as well, this is another one, um, I think it gives you freedom to play with perspective and scale, not that I'm that good at it, but you, I still have the option with comics as opposed to like a singular illustration where it'd be a lot more confined. So he's in his gloomy bare room, he grabs the bottle, he climbs on the table, he gets undressed and plunges into the, the neck of the, the wine, so I think we've all been there, right, unless you don't drink. And there's another one, this is probably yeah, a bit more serious, I guess. There's a, a guy in his dark box. He blo he, he's irked by the light coming through. He blocks the light, but it's just a vast desert. It, I thought it was a play on like ignorance is bliss. I thought that was quite good. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, here's another one. So this one, I think it's about the, you can just grab inspiration from like everyday things or the mundane things you see around you. It could be hand cream. Um, this actually inspired me. My girlfriend got one of those like teeth whitening kits off the internet. Um, which probably do like, lots of damage to you. So you see this in the comic, how it makes sense. She applies a 
face cream, sizzles a hole in her cheek. But now she's got the look. She can look like everyone else. <laughs> it was all worth it. Of course you're worth it. I mean, here's another one. Um, I suppose my comics, they do kind of fit in that bracket of being like a relatable comic, which you find online, um, because maybe you can find some relatability in the, the gym goer, pumping iron, big and strong. But in the locker room, he's just sort of pale and <laughs> insecure. <laughs> I'm on, oh, there's one more. It's the early hours of the morning. What's in the fridge? Pours his milk. Mmm. <laughs> Nicorette milk. Nicotine milk. That's a, yeah, chewing gum. Um, but what was great about these comics is I was able to get a gig for Adult Swim, and uh, I mean, they were a huge influence and reason I got into illustration in the first place. I'm a big fan of their humor and their, um, their style, and, and the, the, you know, they work with young illustrators and animators. Um, it's great, they gave me complete creative freedom in this, um, which is kind of a, a bit more pressure as well, in a way, because um, you, don't, you never know if you're going to nail an illustration. You, you, you want to do your best one for them, but sometimes you can end up really pretty shit, which is unfortunate. But anyway, hey ho, that's life. Here's one that I did for them. It's a sexy pool scene. They flirt, she, he takes a drag on her cigarette. She blushes, he exits the pool. He has a big scrotum-esque body <laughs> with, with sort of things and arms and limbs on it. Um, I thought it was quite clever. I thought of the word it could be called shallow, but then I realised the, the word shallow comes from that anyway, so I wasn't actually being clever at all. Uh, this is a new one for Adult Swim, actually. I'm not sure I should be showing this. I'll probably get in trouble. Um, but anyway, I um, hope it makes sense. Uh, there's a patient in the doctor's office. The, the doctor instructs them to get onto the bed, you know, as, as a doctor would. He cavorts, wearing a, a thong and a bird beak. The doctor intently takes notes. The real doctor enters the room. The fake doctor escapes through the window with suspenders on. And, weird draw and funny drawings. Um, and here's one more adult swim. Uh, foreplay. Tying up. She feeds him. She continues to feed him. Three months later, she still feeds him. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit grim. So that's it. Um, this is just a, a video of like, my process. I work on an iPad, and I always feel like working digitally can be, you know, for an illustrator, maybe it's a bit frowned upon in the illustration world. But, I mean, it kind of suits my, my method of working. I, I find, like, I kind of get... My stuff is very technically refined, but it helps to, like, check, you know, get stuff out quickly. I mean, here's a video of the process, just to give you a run. It won't be the whole five hours, because you'll, you know, you'll be falling asleep. But um, yeah, so this is it. I, I, I mean, I work, obviously get the idea down in a sketchbook, um, like most people do. Um, and yeah, I like to sort of look at the mundane and try, some, try and find something ridiculous in it. I think that's the, the way I work. Um, yeah, I, I've run out of things to say, and the video's still playing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, so, and, and I think that illustration in comic form for me, personally, it's been really liberating because it's given me like a, a lease of life of, in a way because, as I said, it's that different method of thinking and approaching it. Um, and you can just get on with it. So I'm, I've run out of things again, so I'll let, I'll let you watch just the process until I can escape. My buttocks. Sorry. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Cheers.